Welcome to Reread. Boy, do I have a big one for you today. It's Shadows of the Empire. I remember when this came out, uh, there's a lot of big hype around it. I read it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Coming back at it a second time, I said, is it good? And the short answer is, yeah, it's still a good book. Still a solid novel. Has its problems, but we're going to talk about all this. Uh, first off, at the beginning, which I remember very well, uh, Prince Caesar gets to listen into the conversation of Darth Vader and the Emperor from Empire Strikes Back. Now, the Emperor did this on purpose, we know, because he's trying to stir up a rivalry between Vader and Caesar. And Caesar doesn't know that uh, Darth Vader's son is Luke Skywalker. In fact, he doesn't really, hasn't really kept tabs on who Skywalker is. So now he's got some great interest in this, because later on it's revealed, way later on the book is revealed, that Darth Vader killed off his family with some uh, in, uh, laboratory experiments gone wrong. Now, chronologically speaking, we knew this happened because there was an attack from some Falines against Darth Vader about this, but we never got to see the actual instance play out. And that's, that was a miss for Dark Horse comic books. They really should have done that. I think a lot of people would love to have seen how those events rolled out. Kind of give Caesar, Prince Caesar a little bit more backstory too. Plus you could have put, put Caesar in that comic book. But anyway, I digress. Uh, there's one question that Steve Perry does not answer, and I wish he would have. Why does Luke, in between Empire and Jedi, not go back to Dagobah? Why didn't he go back and complete his training now? Yes, he was very busy with the Rebellion. Yes, he was trying to find Han. And yes, he just never made the time. But maybe give us a reason. Tell, have it make sense on why. Because he even mentions that, you know, uh, Luke mentions about what's been going on. Like he just, you know, he left Yoda too early. He found out about Darth Vader being his father. He's all confused. You know, he's growing as a Jedi, but he still has a lot to learn. Okay, well, then go back to Dagobah. I guess Luke figures he just doesn't have the time, but I wish they would have addressed that. They didn't. Um, Dash, I knew Dash Rendar was at the Battle of Hoth. I forgot that he was in one of the fighters taking down some of the Adats. I'd forgotten about that. I knew he was making deliveries. Um, Dash Rendar is kind of blah. Everyone thought, well, he's the you know poor man's Han Solo, and yeah, he's got extra bravado and extra ego. Lebo, his droid, is hardly even in this, which I didn't realize that. I thought Lebo was more fleshed out, but they waited for uh, Shadow Games, uh, which is a much better Dash Rendar depiction, much better story for Dash Rendar. Dash Rendar here is kind of bland. You know, there's not really much character art to him. His story is kind of dumb. His death is stupid. I remember always hating his death. I mean, yes, he didn't die, but, you know... He's, they're flying at the end through debris, and debris just happens to hit him, and there's a bright, bright flash. And so Luke and Lando turn away so they can't see what happened, and it looks like uh, the Outrider got disintegrated, and Dash is gone. Oh, well, poor Dash. I always thought that was a lame way for Dash to end, until later on we find out he's still alive, of course, because no one dies in the expanded universe unless they're in New Jedi Order. One thing I did forget that I really did love, uh, Darth Vader... Uh, one thing I do remember is he, he's trying to breathe outside of his suit. He lasts up to two minutes. He's very happy. He's trying to call the dark side to give him strength to you know get himself free from the prison that is his suit. Uh, I believe James Lucino talked a little bit about that and kind of fleshed out that idea. He may have got it from Shadows of the Empire, but it's, it's really depicted well here. Darth Vader, and this is the one I forgot, he is happy that his son destroyed the Death Star because he told everyone... Do not take faith in this technological marvel. It is nothing compared to the power of the Force. And he's kind of proud that his son destroyed the Death Star to kind of prove that point. But yet the Emperor is so short-sighted that he's building another one, thinking that's, that's the key. And Darth Vader just doesn't believe it. He believes that you know the dark side is more powerful than any super weapon. And I like that dichotomy between the Emperor and Darth Vader. Because Darth Vader knows he can't defeat him. He knows the Emperor is too powerful. He knows that he can foresee things. He's better connected to the dark side than Vader is. But Vader is convinced, if I can, convince, if I can get my son to turn to the dark side, then he and I combine can take the Emperor and rule the galaxy. You know, And that's Vader's plan to overthrow the Emperor. Now, this explains how many Bothans died to get capture the Death Star plans, because that happens. They capture these Death Star plans. Obviously, it's a fake, and the Emperor says that, and he wants Vader to make a show of, like, the Empire's very upset that these plans have been stolen, you know, because they want the they want the, De the second Death Star to remain a secret. Um, so Vader has to act a role that, 
you know, uh, the Empire lashes out on a planet that you know the Bothans kind of infiltrated to get their information on, which I thought was good. Uh, there are new disguises for everyone. This explains how Leia got her Bosch, the bounty hunter outfit that you'll see in Return of the Jedi. But everyone has to get in different costumes because Hasbro needs a toy line. It's, it's, it almost feels that way. Anyway, uh, Leia is basically... Re there's that Leia Caesar scene, which I think is so awful. It would never be in any book today or afterwards. It, and it was just so icky. Prince Caesar the whole time's like, you know, you know, he 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 thinks Leia's nice. What does she look naked or nude? Don't worry, he'll see soon enough, close up. And and then another one is, you know, Le Leia wants him because he's putting out the pheromones, and there's only one thing that'll satisfy her, and he can't wait to give it to her. <laughs> and I mean just just uncalled for just dirtiness. And Steve Perry has what I call the uh dirty old man writer syndrome. Uh, Robert Jordan suffered from it a lot, and they just like to write dirty, little disgusting things. Sure, Zizor is is disgusting. He's the villain. Oh, yes, he wants to bed uh, Princess Leia. That's really all we need to know, but all about giving it to her and wondering what she's like naked and demanding she take off her clothes and get all sexy. And he's, he's he, you know, he's in a garb that's see-through, and you can see his manhood just hanging out there. And, yeah, okay, you read Penthouse Letters. And I make the joke about Robert Jordan sitting behind his typewriter going, yeah, and that's probably what, you know, Steve Perry's doing is just leaving out some kind of sick fantasy of Princess Leia. Um, and it's, it's, it's very rapey and very uncalled for. And it's still, it, it's just, yuck. It's just yuck. I, I, I just don't like it at all. You can, you can have Caesar as the bad guy without all that. And wanting to, you know, attract Leia and, 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 and get her. You know, that's fine. Now, something happens like, Chewbacca kind of breaks in the middle of everything and it brings Leia to her senses, but it doesn't really explain how she fights off the pheromones. I mean, anger, she knows about the pheromones now, she knows about Prince Caesar, and she's not letting him be tricked again. So does it only work once? And once you're strong, I mean, I don't know, strong-willed to get rid of it? I don't know. Either way, I guess, you know, someone looked at Steve Perry's writing and said, you need to do a U-turn on this. This is looking like penthouse letters. And they probably just poured cold water on him, and he sobered up, and the next night started writing uh, correctly again. Anyway, uh, Luke, there's a there's a pointless little storyline here. Luke is captured by bounty hunters, but then uses a mind trick to get out, and then he is, you know, uh, moving. I don't know. He's saved by Lando. Lando picks him up. Then they go to rescue Leia, who's been captured. This is the whole Bantam thing that they kind of have. Everyone gets captured by the bad, bad guy. But now Leia is captured by Prince Caesar. Chewbacca tells him what's going on. So then all three of them attempt to rescue uh, Princess Leia, who escapes on her own too. And then they're running around the castle where they get trapped. And it's really, it's really a good scene. Luke ignites a thermal detonator and says, if you don't let us go, I'm going to blow this whole thing up and you with me. He's, and, and Prince Caesar doesn't know Luke Skywalker enough to know if he's uh, uh, bluffing or not. Surely the kid is bluffing. But he is the son of Darth Vader, and Darth Vader does not bluff. And I love that he keeps going back and forth in his head, but then decides he, he's almost sure that Luke is bluffing, but he cannot risk it. He cannot risk because his base has all these secrets, all these priceless artifacts, so he can't risk it. He decides to let Luke go and then pursue him afterwards, and that's the best option. So Prince Caesar agrees, but Lando knows that Caesar is up to something. He grabs the thermal detonator, throws it down the garbage chute where no one can get it, and everyone, the guards, Caesar, everyone starts running for it because the base is about to explode. The base explodes, everyone escapes, Caesar is hot, and of course he gets to his sky hook. This is the grand finale here. He wants to take out Luke. Meanwhile, Vader realizes that Prince Caesar is trying to kill his son, and he realizes about Caesar's past, even though Vader never brings that up to Prince Caesar which I thought he did in this book, but he never does. He discovers it, but then never says, I know what I did, or you know, taunts him about his parents. Which I was like, okay, what was the purpose of him you know, having the secret and having it revealed to Vader if they don't have a confrontation about it? That was something that I'd forgotten about because I thought that Vader did tell Caesar that, you know, I just like I killed your parents, I'll kill you too. I thought something like that, but nothing like that happens. Anyway, there is a good scene 
I should mention that uh, this is the scene, this is the book where 3PO and R2-D2 fly the Millennium Falcon, which is of course funny because as Luke's on the comlink with them, they hear glass shattering, they just ran through a billboard, look out, there's someone pursuing them, or you know, the whole time 3PO's yelling at R2 and then yelling at, at, out at the screen, get out of the way! And, and that's pretty funny. Leia the whole time as they're running through the castle, like, you, castle, she's, you, you let them, you let the droids fly the Falcon? He went, yeah, okay, whatever. And he gets on time, he's on the comlink with 3PO, 3PO screaming at R2, and then Leia goes, you let them fly the Falcon? And Luke goes, let it go! It's just really funny. I can see that kind of dialogue taking place, and it would be for a funny scene. And it, it does work well. Like I said, the book overall flows well. I think Lando is written excellently, by the way. I mean, it feels like Lando Carician. There's one at the very beginning where 3PO uh, said, well, I'm so glad you didn't leave me outside. They're inside of a bar. And Lando goes, well, we would, 3PO, but there's a bunch of, I hear there's dastardly thieves. He holds his hands up like this, around outside that will steal a droid, you know? And I can see, and he's just trying to scare 3PO, but I can see Lando saying that. And it's, uh, again, Obviously, I love Lando Carician, and I miss him being a, an integral part of the story. And he is here, and he is excellent. He's excellently written. Now, eventually, Darth Vader will crest over to the other side of Coruscant, where Caesar's Skyhook is. Caesar is his army is kind of surrounding the Millennium Falcon and Luke's X-wing, and they're about to wipe him out. Rogue Squadron shows up, but Rogue Squadron isn't enough to stop the army. So when the TIE Fighters come, Luke's like, oh, we are really screwed now, as, as if things couldn't get any worse. Well, then the TIE Fighters pass over them and start shooting Caesar's ships. And they're like, what is going on? Darth Vader issues an ultimatum to Caesar to cease and desist, because he said, I told you to leave Skywalker alone. Now I'm going to take you out. P Prince Caesar says, if you take me out, you got to answer to the Emperor. He went, I will. <laughs> you know, Vader's like, had it now. You know, he, he won't kill Caesar because the Emperor said not to, but now Caesar's crossed the line, messing with his son. And it's funny because Prince um, Darth Vader is secretly proud of his son for staying alive, and Caesar, Caesar not able to kill him. And I love that Steve Perry put that in there. Like, you know, his son is a nuisance, but he is, he said, that's my boy, you know. And Vader can't wait because he is positive the more that Luke turns, you know, uses the dark side and unleashes his anger, that he'll turn to the dark side just like he did as Anakin Skywalker. And that makes sense. But anyway, of course, uh, Vader gives him two minutes to surrender. Caesar doesn't. So he blows up the skyhook with Caesar in it. They kind of hint that Caesar would be alive at the end because the Emperor's like, are you sure he died? He went, I don't see how he could have escaped. But yeah, Caesar is dead. He's not back in this at all, which is good. I, I don't think Caesar should have made it out alive and come back to fight another day after the Empire's been destroyed. Caesar had his moment, and then it should end like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Dash and all of them, that's where they go. As the Skyhook blows up, it creates an opening, and they go through the wreckage and escape. And Darth Vader, even though he's disappointed, uh, that he couldn't capture Luke, but he knows that they're destined to fall, you know, fall back together because the Emperor has foreseen that Luke will come to them eventually. Because this basically is leading up to Return of the Jedi, which at the end of the book, uh, Luke is recording his message for Jabba, and they're about to get a, mount up a rescue mission. Overall, it is a good book. It is an enjoyable read, um, and it still holds up. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.